Okay, this is the diagram of a refracting telescope in normal adjustment. This is a key diagram for Unit 5 astrophysics because they just love to ask about this. Um, we've already got our principal axis on there. So we need, first of all, an objective lens. So we're going to put that at the object end over there to the left. Uh, so our star is somewhere in this direction. And we know it's a convex lens because we've got our little curves on the end to show which way the lens is bending. We also need an eyepiece lens and crucially the separation between these two lenses for normal adjustment needs to be the sum of their focal lengths. Okay so here's the focal point of this lens for light coming this way but it's also the focal point of the eyepiece lens as well. How do we use this to uh, magnify an image? Well Here's a ray of light which has come from the top of a distant object over there. You'll notice that this makes the object quite large. This is the bottom of the object or the middle maybe of the object. And this gives us a huge size if we go to the left. That's because this diagram is hugely enlarged in terms of the angles to make it nice and easy to see what's going on. This ray of light has come through the optical center of the lens, therefore it's undeviated, it's just gone straight through. We're going to worry about what happens over here in a minute, but we need two more beams because they always ask you to draw three in the exam. So here's another ray of light. You'll notice this has come in parallel because these two beams have come, although they've come from the same point, that point is so far away that the light from it is effectively parallel. Where's this ray going to go? Well, these are parallel rays of light coming into a lens. The law for that is that they meet at a focal point of the lens, not the principal focus here, but another focal point lower down. Here comes the one below the line. Again, the same thing. That's going to go through that focal point. So that's the path of the beams as far as the eyepiece lens. So where do these lines go next? Well, the crucial thing is that these beams have come from the focal point of this lens, and we know that beams that come from the focal point come out parallel. So the only question really is parallel, but parallel which way? Do they come up here? Do they go over there? Well, just imagine another ray that's come from this light. If this ray goes in this direction through the center of that lens, sorry, one click too far. If it goes through the center of that lens, the optical center, it's undeviated. All rays which have come from here must come out parallel, so the other rays must also come out parallel to that line. So this line and these lines are all parallel. Okay, where's the image formed? Well, we're looking through here, we're looking back down these beams, and it looks as if the image is formed at infinity. This is normal adjustment. If you want to form a real image over here, you can by adjusting this distance, moving this lens back a little bit. That'll form a real image. So if you wanted to look at sunspots, for example, you wouldn't want to look through the telescope at the sun. That'd be a very bad idea. So you form a screen over here and you can form it. But we're only interested really for the purposes of this specification in normal adjustment. So the image is formed at infinity. And then the only thing that remains for us is to be able to work out the magnification produced by this telescope. And we do that as follows. This is the angle alpha. This is the angle that the object appears to make as you look at it in between this beam which has come from the bottom, this beam which has come from the top. That's the angle alpha that will show you the size. When you're looking at it afterwards, okay, you're looking down in this direction, so you get this angle beta. And we say the angular magnification is beta over alpha. You can clearly see from this diagram the angle beta is much bigger than the angle alpha. Therefore, we're looking at an image which is bigger than the original object. How do we relate this to the focal lens? Well, we can do a little bit of trigonometry. We can put in a triangle for alpha and a triangle for beta. Notice this alpha is the same as this alpha. This is uh, because they've gone across this line here. This beta is the same as this beta because they're both on those lines and those lines are parallel. So we can look at these two triangles. Look at this triangle. They've both got the same height in the middle here. So if we do a tan is opposite over adjacent. That means H over F naught is tan alpha. But because this angle is very small, in reality, tan alpha is approximately equal to alpha. Do the same for beta. 
we get tan beta is approximately equal to beta, which is h over Fe. So we're only a little step from beta over alpha is h over Fe divided by h over Fo. The focal length of the eyepiece lens divided by the focal length of the objective lens. If we turn that up because we're dividing by a fraction, then we get B over A. The angle of magnification is also FO over FE, which clearly tells us that if we want a telescope that actually makes things look bigger, we need one with a longer focal length on the eyepiece lens, uh, sorry, on the objective lens than on the eyepiece lens.